when I started Jarvis Boards, it really began as this sort of after work hobby project for me. I wanted to build these paddle boards for my own personal use, my own enjoyment. And from there, you know, it slowly organically became a company as friends and friends of friends. And then random strangers started reaching out and asking, you know, could you build me one of these paddle boards? Slowly but surely, this thing that started as a hobby in my garage really blew up into a business. And one of the really unique things that caught me off guard personally is the connections that I've made with people, whether it be in person or random strangers that I've met via email and then later gone on to meet in person, learn what paddleboarding means to them, why they care about the sport, and really just learn their background. And to me, that's, that's really, really cool. It's really been unique. You know, I sell these boards, meet new people. You know, everybody's really sort of got their own story, right? I'm in Dana Point, California out for a paddleboard race and this dude comes up to me and goes, hey, are you the Jarvis Boards guy? And it turned out to be this guy, Sam, that I'd been following on, on Instagram for a while. And he told me this crazy story about growing up in Nicaragua, how he and his mom and all of his siblings grew up down there doing a bunch of mission work. Before I knew it, I was like, man, this is awesome. Like, I want to get to Nicaragua and, you know, how can I be a part of, like, helping that mission work? Yeah, so met Sherry and, you know, she really admired the paddle boards and was asking me a lot of questions about them and, and learned her story and the work that she had done through her nonprofit Missions of Grace, how she wanted to utilize the paddle boards to access some of the more remote villages and more remote uh, regions on the Rio San Juan River Basin. Uh, and she really talked about some of the cool stuff that she's done providing medical care throughout the country and she really wanted to use the paddle boards to reach these more remote regions and see one, what type of medical need might be down there and two, what type of volunteerism activities she may be able to bring teams with later um, who could go down to these villages and provide health care. And so we hashed together this plan to, to fly in a couple of paddle boards down to Managua and I agreed to join her and you know we loaded them on a chicken bus, drove that for seven, eight hours and from there you know put the, the paddle boards on, on pongas and rode those deeper into the jungle for two, three hours and then you know lo and behold you're at the start of your, your trip and the start of your adventure and from there we paddled down to some of these really just you know you call them villages but they're you know a couple of houses sort of put together and some farmland around them and you don't know how people are going to react when you you know, stroll up on a, a paddleboard, let alone a, a wooden paddleboard. They've never seen a paddleboard before. And it was just really rewarding to be part of that experience and, you know, just really life-changing to, to go down there firsthand and, and experience that along with Sherry and Missions of Grace. You know, as a paddler, you know, we're paddling these paddleboards down this indescribably beautiful remote jungle. There's howler monkeys yelling. There's these crazy birds that you've never seen before. And it's just paddleboarding on a whole nother level, right? Like, but it's kind of also sensory overload at the same time because it's so gorgeous and beautiful. Well, for me, it was the first time really experiencing really remote villages and the jungle. And to be completely honest, you know, there was moments where I wouldn't say I was nervous but uh, just hyper cognizant of how we were being perceived but it was just awesome to see how welcoming everyone was in these villages and how they welcomed us almost as if you know we had just come from the next village over. I definitely see our paddle boards in a different light and cognizant of how can Jarvis boards go from just building a product that's built from enjoyment but how can we also be really a conduit for positive change in the world. And so that's sort of the next evolution, I think, of Jarvis Boards is looking for those opportunities in which we can use this platform and the small business that we're building to make the world a better place now and in the future.